Excellencies, ladies and uh, gentlemen, let me first of all congratulate the national agenda. And as former Prime Minister, I know that is important in itself. A country that is blessed with valuable natural resources, as Norway is, faces many exciting opportunities, but also some demanding challenges. Several surveys have been conducted comparing the economic and democratic development in countries with significant deposits of natural resources with countries that have no or limited amounts of such resources. Surprisingly enough, these surveys show that countries without natural resources tend to have a better economic growth compared to countries with abundant natural resources. This negative relationship holds true even taking into account variables found to be important for economic growth such as initial per capita income, trade policy, government efficiency, investment rates and other variables. A sound, responsible management of natural resources involves, in my view, three main challenges. First, to ensure that revenues from these resources benefit the entire population. Two, to ensure that these resources are mined or extracted in accordance with responsible good management principles, locally, nationally, as well as globally. And three, to ensure that the resources are exploited in an environmental, sustainable way. Corruption is very often strongly associated with the extraction of natural resources. The money goes into the pockets of the financial or political elite rather than to improve living conditions for the benefit of the entire population. The temptation for people in various positions of trust to steal from the community values and resources is probably the same in all parts of the world. However, the lack of legislation and the absence of control of monetary flows are important reasons why corruption is so serious and widespread in many developing countries. In these countries, corruption is a major reason for the lack of economic development and makes it difficult to establish a well-functioning trade and industry. There is one powerful instrument to counter widespread corruption, namely keeping a maximum transparency connected to the significant cash flows that follow the extraction of natural resources. It should be an inevitable requirement that cash flows that emanate from taxes, signature bonuses, etc., should be monitored at every stage of the transfer chain, both in the states and the various companies' accounts. Due to lack of, regis uh, of regulations and legislation, many countries have far too modest incomes from the exploitation of the country's natural resources. Knowledge transfer may also be limited because companies prefer to bring in their own people from outside rather than to train the country's own labor force. When money flows into the treasury, another danger is lurking. The temptation to pour too much money into the economy 
over a short time to meet basic needs for education, for health, infrastructure, and other important purposes. However, experience from unrestrained spending is scary. A sudden increase of foreign currency, appreciation of the exchange rate, inflation and decreasing competitiveness in other exporting sectors. It is therefore so important to find a good balance between investment, consumptions, and savings. Taking into account that these riches, resources, have been built up and deposited over millions of years, there is another good reason why the exploitation should have a more long-term perspective. Namely, that it is, not, it is not fair to deprive future generations their legitimate right to benefit from the country's natural resources. In Norway, the so-called Government Pension Fund Global is saving for future generations. One day, the oil and gas will run out, also in our country. But the return on the fund will continue to benefit the Norwegian population. The Norwegian Pension Fund is today the world's biggest sovereign wealth fund. The fund's market value per January 2015 is 6,600 billion Norwegian crowns, or about 850 billion US dollar. The fund was set up to give the government room for maneuvering in fiscal policy should oil prices drop, as it's doing today, or the mainland economy contract. It also serves as a tool to manage the financial challenges of an aging population and an expected drop in petroleum revenues that will come sooner or later. The, fine, the fund was designed to be investing for the long term, but in a way that made it possible to draw on its resources when required. One fundamental principle of Norwegian fiscal policy is the so-called budget, uh, budgetary rule, namely that the government can spend only the expected real return of the fund, estimated at 4% per year. This helps to phase the oil revenue into the economy gradually, and in this way avoid overheating of the economy, spending only the return on the fund rather than eating into its capital also means that the fund will benefit future generations. As Prime Minister, I experienced that people in Norway demanded that we should use more of the fund for all good purposes and some politicians in opposition joined their voices. And this was a real political challenge. It was not easy, especially in, when we were campaigning before an election, but it was necessary to oppose these popular demands and to act in a responsible way. A balanced and moderate production rate is also in better compliance with sustainable environmental and climate considerations. But by help of new technology, it is possible today to extract natural resources quickly and efficiently. Mining companies, oil companies, and other companies engaged in the extraction of natural resources will, for obvious business interests, 
push for the most efficient operation and optimum returns. However, key economic, social and environmental considerations make it necessary for the authorities to regulate both the pace and how the operation should be organized from the search starts throughout the manufacturing process and ultimately to how the company will clean up after themselves when production ceases. Climate change and environmental degradation pose substantial threats to the living conditions and to the well-being of citizens of every country. These processes have the potential to undermine important gains in poverty elevation, basic food and water supply, and human health, particularly in the most vulnerable developing countries. Though the poorest countries historically have been the least responsible for climate change, they face the most severe consequences of its effects. Therefore, any planned exploitation of natural resources has to go through a thorough assessment of positive and negative impacts such as an ex uh, such an exploitation would entail. A short-term economic gain cannot be balanced against the long-term serious and negative consequences for people and the environment. Obviously, natural resources do not always appear as a blessing for a country. Such resources can also be a source of serious protracted conflicts. From Africa, we learn how poor nations with natural resources can experience intrastate conflicts between the government army and different rebel movements. Civil wars in Angola, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Democratic Republic of Congo are all examples of conflicts that largely are fueled by greed for natural resources as a basis for economic and political power. A democratic political system will, in the longer perspective, in my view, be the best guarantee for a sustainable and responsible management of natural resources. Real democracy implies power sharing and transparency. The Oslo Center, where I'm the founder and president, is running democracy assistance projects in several countries, contributing to develop democratic political institutions and pr uh, processes and good governance. We see our efforts as a contribution to responsible management of natural resources. To conclude, there are plenty of temptations and pitfalls along the road to develop a responsible and just extraction of natural resources. But at the end of this road, a golden opportunity emerges to transform natural resources into economic growth and improved standard of living covering to the benefit of all people on the precondition that it is environmental sustainable. Thank you.